Good morning everyone and welcome to the first and final, the third and final edition of the morning after breakfast show. It's Friday the 10th of June, I'm Jade Mortimer. And I'm Jason Webster. I can't believe it's the last show. It's gone by real, real fast. Yeah Jason, too far fast. But I need to end my week by the KC Stadium so yeah, I'm off to watch JLS. JLS? How on earth are you going to get drunk at a JLS party? Easy, just drink. Yeah, but you only get one shot. Ah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no way, you didn't just say that. <laughs> That's so funny, Jason. So what did you do last night then? Anything exciting? Well, the only way is Essex are uh, filming a position, so I'm going there to have a few drinks, possibly try and get my 30 seconds of fame. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. So coming up on today's show, have a special guest, Mick Newton from the Purple Worm Records, which is the recording label for Hull College Music Department, and he's here to tell us all the exciting things he does around the college. A movie review from Jonathan Orrick and an, uh, uh, sorry, an interview from the usher himself, Jamie Kelwick, who is also the course leader for the Level 1 Media course here at Hull College Group. Also, we have today's video of the day, which shows the art of demo demolishing silence. Also, we have going on production of our, one of our camera operators, the one and only Alex Slingsby. And we have the Boys vs Girls live challenge, where me and Jude go head to head in the big battle of the sexes. <laughs> so right, and I will win you. You'll be that embarrassed of me kicking your butt. The pub will be the first place for you to go and drown your sorrows. Yeah, yeah, nice one. But that's not the reason I'm going to the pub. <laughs> Moving on to today's hangover cure. This one was sent in by Emily Normanton. She says, before you go to bed, have a very large part plate of nacho chips and cheese and a lot of jalapeno peppers with a drink a large glass on the table <coughs> with a spoon of sugar. That's a bit of an odd one. I don't think I've ever heard of that, nor will try it, to be fair. <laughs> Um, Same. Sorry. Well, this one was sent in from our auto cue controller, Lauren Bosland. She says, while you're still in bed, sip ice cold Dr. Pepper. Yes. Then when you feel you can get up and move about without fainting or getting head rushes, go to Starbucks and have a mocha frappuccino. Haha, ha. I'm an idiot reading the auto cue. I'm a loser, girls. Girls are the best, boys suck. I'm so. <laughs> right, I'm sorry for the inconvenience there, guys. Um, a, a, li a little joke was, a little joke was trying to be played on us, but the control obviously didn't get that correct. <laughs> Today's special guest is Mick Newton, head of Purple Worm Records. He is also a lecturer at the BTEC National Diploma in Music Technology. First of all, thank you for coming to the show. Thank if you would just like to introduce yourself and tell us what you represent. Um, I'm Mick Newton and I run Purple Worm Records. Do you tell us a bit about Purple Worm Records? Yeah, it was um, an independent record label which I founded in 2006. Yeah. So it's very exciting for us this year because we're going to be celebrating our fifth birthday. Oh, nice oh, one. That's exciting. Yeah. Um, can you tell us what kind of music that you produce? Everything. Everything from <laughs> 50s rock and roll up to cutting edge drum and bass and dubstep and everything in between. 
Good to know there's a variation. Mm. Um, do you get your students involved with the record label? We do. It's part of their FMP, their final major project. Yeah. They've got to um, record a professional band, produce a CD single, and then release it. Um, where can people buy your music? They can buy it through every major online store, including iTunes, Napster, Amazon, Virgin. Um, all of the you, ones. Sorry about that. Um, um, do you have what is your aspirations or what you want? What you're trying to achieve in the future? Sorry. Um, peace and harmony. So <laughs> 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 um, um, so, um, yeah. So, like, are any? you looking oh. to? Sorry. Do you have any new music coming out that we can all have a look we at? We do, yeah. We've got two singles out at the moment. One from Susie McDougall and one from a band called Sudo Babylon. They've just been released this month. And then we've got a new CD sampler out next month, which will have four or five different bands on it. Um, and one last question. On our boys versus girls, who are you rooting for? Boys. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. That's, that's what I like to say. Well, thank you for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. Thanks for that. And now it's time for the news. On Tuesday news, we have the most piercing woman gets married. Basically, you know, you see the Guinness World Record records where they're all like pierced and yeah. just like full face well we've got this woman she's called elaine davidson can you see that ugly very <laughs> very ugly and basically this woman's just being married and um, she's a brazilian born miss davidson have you seen that <laughs> um, she's 46 and she made a bizarre sight following a white wedding gown and a floral tiara with only a face visible um, she had a hundred and she's got 192 piercings just on her face. She's got 7,000 piercings so far, covering a whole body. How is that possible? It's disgusting. I mean, how do you feel about pier personally? I hate them. That's why I don't have them. Well, to be fair, I've got like ear piercings and like belly button and things like that. But you won't go as far as no. that. I mean, I know people get addicted to things, but that's just an, it's a big addiction. What about you, mate? What are your views? on? Have you seen that? Yeah. What do you think? Do you th would you? It's not, would not you? Not my cup of tea. To be honest. Have you seen a husband? A husband's just like in a suit, plain tie, bald head, just really like a plain-looking guy. I mean, what was the attraction? Because well, beer goggles. It must have been. Yeah, it must have been. <laughs> uh, moving on, um, have you, the record lost property hall in London. About two hundred and seven thousand items have been recovered in the past year in London. You know, from bags to suitcases, crutches. And even an invitation to the royal wedding, strangely. Um, yes, yeah, so books, ironically, were the most common item left by passengers, with 41,000 handed in, as well as 31,000 bags and 28,000 items of clothing. Do you read a lot, Are you a big reader? Um, now and again. No, I can't say I'm a big reader. You know, um, I'm a, I don't know if you've heard of Darren Shan by any chance. No, He's a, a horror writer and uh, Michael Crichton, who did Jurassic Park. I'm a big fan of his. It's weird to know that like, <laughs> books are the most like, left and lost possessions. I, I, do, I always seem to lose my phone. If I don't lose, I mean, like the other day I was out with friends and I thought I'd lost it and I dropped it actually in the car <laughs> and I was going around, I was going crazy. And then um, we tried ringing it and someone picked it up and said, oh, it's in the car. I always do it and at Whole Fair as well. Lost my phone on the waltzes. I mean, you've got absolutely no <laughs> chance of getting that back in the If you drop it, it's not yours anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's a brilliant. <sighs> Um, yeah, so, well. uh, yes, um, and now for the sports and weather with Adam Farrah. Thank you, Jason, and good morning to you all. Uh, the Bahrain Grand Prix, we can now confirm, will not be going ahead. The 2011 calendar is set to be revised. By the way, before we continue, I'm aware I have got lumps in my hat, which will become apparent in a moment. Uh, the Dallas Mavericks hold a 3-2 lead against the highly tipped favourites, the Miami Heat. A potential NBA final is played on Sunday. If not, it will go to the best of seven. Another news, Jordan Henderson is now an official Liverpool player. They signed him for a fee within the region of what is to believe to be 20 million. Sunderland hope to sign Darren Gibson, John O'Shea and Wes Brown using the money 
from the selling of Jordan Henderson to sign all three players for uh, some believed to be around 12 million. In rugby league news, uh, Richie Myler says he's determined to make the most of his chance after being recalled to the England side for the first time in 18 months. The Warrington star will line up at scrum half against the Exiles at Headingley on Friday night when he earns his fifth cap. And now over to Anita for the weather. Thank you for that sterling introduction, Adam. Today it will be very sunny down in Cornwall, as it always will be. It will be slightly rainy towards the Humber region and Cumbria. It will be absolutely scorching hot in Northern Ireland for a change. It will be rather lightningy in the islands of Scotland and in Northern Scotland. And it will be sunny and with patches of cloud around the Midlands. Back to you in the studio. How are you feeling today, anyway? I'm not too bad, Jason. I have you out. enjoyed your time on the set? I have enjoyed my time, especially I, uh, dressing up. I just wanted to say I do love your, I do love your dress and makeup. It's, so do I. Yeah, I think it suits you. I love the colour. Buy you a few my drinks. Favorite in the world. after. I didn't know you um, wore skirts in your spare time. Oh, it's a little hobby of mine. Nice pigtails as well. I know. You have to teach me how to do that. that. And your legs as well. I know they're uh, <laughs> not very shaven today, but uh, exactly. hopefully tomorrow they will be. I hope so, Ad. Now it's time for today's third and final Kirsty Quote of the Day. The Kirsty Quote of the Day is... <laughs> if you didn't hear that, it was Pluto's not even in England. <laughs> yeah. Loose in the studio. Someone, someone get her on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, remember when she thought Libby was in Egypt? <laughs> oh, silly. Um, yeah, so moving on to the picture of the day. Today's picture of the day has been sent in by the wonderful Andrew Dye, boyfriend of director Chantal Burnett. Andy, unknowing to the Chantel, has been caught in this plan prank. <laughs> <laughs> and we also we also have this one as well with <laughs> hey, do you know what? This this actually looks a bit like um Adams. Oh, look at her uh, smile. Oh. oh, she looks so happy. I can't wait to see her. <laughs> I think that's Christmas, to be fair. She doesn't look too enthusiastic about what she's opening there, she so God knows what that was. If you could <laughs> so hear her, Shunto, you don't look very happy at all. Oh, this <laughs> one's a bit more cute, eh? <laughs> right. Just in case you didn't see this. Oh, sorry. Apparently, apparently that one was at a nan's house. Oh dear. <laughs> Her style apparently was inspired by Adam Farrer a couple of years ago. <laughs> but moving on, uh, we now have another project from our level three BTEC National Diploma in Media students. This is a demolishing silence project. We are given a UK silent film from the 1900s and we are asked to experiment by creating our own soundtrack. This one is produced by Ironic Productions. Shoot BT. I deserve all this publicity. You know what? I'm gonna steal my stupid twin brother, Dr. Cortex's invention, just because I'm bitter and jealous. Midget scum.
Hello, everyone. Glad to see you all came. Presenting my latest invention. This picture is irrelevant, so please completely ignore it. This man has nothing to do with whatever we are doing. Playing Dr. Robotnikus, I saw him act suspicious earlier. Can you see him? And now the moment you've all been waiting for, a chance to see it live. Come on everybody. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, you may also be wondering as to what the hell is even on this picture. Well, it's actually a picture of my friend who's currently sleepwalking with a somnambulist. I've been asleep for the last 25 years. Anyway, back to the story. Come and see my latest invention, ladies and gentlemen. Take your hats off, ladies and gentlemen. Come and roll up, roll up. Uh, here it is, my invisible monkey. Not that monkey, get off. Ah! That was Ironic Productions with their brilliant Demolishing Silence. Now the part you have all been waiting for. It's the final of the Boys vs Girl Challenges. This is the first of three small challenges that makes up the final decision. Well, you know I'm going to win. That's all. Do I've you got. have any clue what's going on, to be, like what they've got in store? Because I have no idea, to be fair. No. All uh, I know is that they all seem to be very edgy and laughing at us. I, so I hope it's uh, not uh, something bad. S when they sent us <laughs> out yesterday, when they were planning it, oh, God. Right, so let's start. Let's see what our first challenge is. Yeah. Here with us is our sport and weather man slash game host, Adam Farrer. This first challenge is Pictionary. The rules are the first person to guess what I'm drawing on this board here wins the point for this round. Let the game begin. Right, you're going down. Come on, Jason! <laughs> Come, on. Come on, Jason! Come on! Come on, Jason! A car! It's a car! Yeah. It's a, a bike! It's a bike! Yeah. I said it first. That was oh, definitely no. me. Oh. I'm going to say the winner for that one is Jade. Oh. <laughs> Next picture. It's, it's, it's a light. It's, what is it? I'm it's a lawnmower. It's a lawnmower, Jade. When the flipboard decides to behave. I can't it. You've won this. Next one. Come on, you need to do it. It's a pair of glasses. It's a face. It's a face. It's Colin. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely Colin. Come on, I can't tell who that is. Uh, Harry Potter. Uh, I really don't have a clue. I'm going to have to. I think we should quit. I'm going to forfeit this one. You've already won two of them. Oh, it's Alexius! Oh, it's Alexius. Ooh, Jade oh. wins that one again. <laughs> <sighs> now, here's an ongoing production by our very own Alex Slingsby. It's, an it's a cartoon animation about two cousins called Harry and Larry. That work for a crazy inventor. Shoot that crazy about a little crazy cartoon.
keep up the two. Oh, I think I dropped my retainer into the water. It's here, it flew into my face. What are you two resting for? We still have tests to do. Don't worry, Larry. At least you found my retainer. I'm waiting. So, what did you think of that cartoon, then? Mm. Quite surprised actually. Well, I mean, for Alex anyway. I, I mean, know. I've not really seen anything. He, that's he didn't before. actually like show us how good he is, but I suppose when he gets his head to it, it's good enough. Oh, well, I mean, I've tried doing. Anim I did an animation thing on the building across there, and uh, like, I barely learned what a keyframe was, let alone doing anything like that. Anyway, have you tr done any animation? Well, we did one, didn't we? On our so group? we did. Yeah, we did our, our stop little motion. creatures. <laughs> anyway, oh, yeah, now well, it's time totally. for the second round of the Boys vs Girls Challenge. <laughs> I'm sure she's biased. Welcome back to the Boys vs Girls Challenge round two. This challenge is called Guess Who? I have with me a series of descriptions belonging to members of our crew and lecturers. The first to guess wins this round. Let the game begin. Come on, Jason! I'll do it, guys! I'll do it, I promise! Yeah. Alright, I have my person. Ask away. Yes or no answers only. Is it a boy? Yes. Are they visible at this moment? Yes. Have they got black hair? No. Um. Are they wearing jeans? Yes. Do they have the blue top on? No. Is it Alex? It is not. <sighs> do they have purple in the t-shirt? They do. Is it? Is it Michael? It is indeed. Yes. Michael. yes. Come on, Jason. Come on, Jason. Come on, Jason. Woo! Next name. Told you, told you. Well, right, I have my person. Ask away. Is it a female? No. Do they have jeans on? Yes. Are they wearing a white shirt? No. Do they have a named brand on? T-shirt. No. Is it Danny? No. Come on, Jason. Come on, Jason. Come on, Jason. Come on, Jason. Is it a dark okay. coloured pair of jeans or a light coloured pair? Dark coloured pair of jeans. Dark. Is it Alex? It is indeed yes. Alex. Yes. Come on, Jason. Oh, no. Come on, Jason. Come on, Jason. Come on, Jason. Come on, you are taking my ideas. I'll come up with the first one, then you take it oh, off me. Right, just accept it's 1-1. One, one. Right, right, I haven't... I'll win the next one. Anyway, today's Entertainment BT is a movie review filmed by a local, ci filmed at a local cinema of the film X-Men um, and the Kung Fu Panda in Huff. Also, Jonathan has an exclusive interview from the head of Level 1 Interactive Youth of Ermley of Media that teaches here at Hull College. Shoot BT. Welcome to In the Foyer for the Morning After on HBTV. I'm here with Jamie Kelwick from BBC Radio Humberside and today we're going to be talking about two of the summer's biggest releases, Kung Fu Panda 2 and The X-Men First Class. We'll start with Kung Fu Panda 2. So Jamie, what did you think of Kung Fu Panda 2? Well to be fair, I'm a really big fan of the first one. Um, it makes a little bit of a change because I I was hoping that it was going to be a, a new story. It was. Yeah. It wasn't a rehash of the same film or, like The Hangover 2, exact same film set in Thailand. Now, for something completely different, X-Men First Class.
name's Xavier. Charles Xavier, how do you do? Cheers. So much more to you than you know. I done it! Not just pain and anger. There's good in you too. And when you can harness all that, you'll possess a power no one can match. Not even me. exist. You ready for this? Let's find out. Listen to me very carefully, my friend. Killing will not bring you peace. Peace was never an option. What did you think of the X-Men first part? Well, I'll be completely honest. I hated The Last Stand. And Wolverine was just dreadful. So there was a little sense of trepidation going into this one. But Matthew Vaughan is the director who directed the Fantastic Kick-Ass, which came out last year. Uh, hopes were raised and I think absolutely spot on. Reboots the series. I think you should forget, actually forget about the other uh, four films completely. Started to fresh, it had that 60s vibe, it had a, a Bond theme to it. Michael Fassbender's uh, turn as Magneto, I thought, was very, very Bond like, very Sean Connery like in, in some circumstances. And I just thought it made it fresh, it made it new. Okay, it didn't have, well, it did have, but I'm not going to spoil it, it didn't have Wolverine in this the, the main thing, you know, like he is the main character from the X Men. Right, that's it then, that's the round of these two films. See me next time. What you got in store for us today? Well then, James, it's the last challenge is a super-sized garden Jenga. The rules still apply. That's just the same as the normal-sized Jenga. So, the rules are remove a brick from the tower, pile them on top. You have 10 seconds to remove each brick. The first one to remove a brick and make the tower topple is the loser. Simple as. Jason, are you ready? This phone ready, Adam. Jade, are you ready? Definitely. You go first. Begin. You go first. Ladies first. Come on, Jason! Maybe not ladies first. It's gonna fall, it's gonna fall, it's gonna fall. Come on, Jason! Ten, Ooh. nine, Ooh. eight, Come on, come seven, on! Six. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Ah, oh, that was a soft one. Ten, nine, <laughs> eight, seven. Oh, the pressure is. Eight. Come on, Jade. Come on. Five. Come on. Four. Three. Two. It's going to fall, it's going to fall. Oh. Six, five, four, three, two, one. I can't. One. Get it. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'll let you have that one if it goes. Oh, sorry, guys. Man. Sorry, guys. <laughs> come on, come on. Good. Five, four. Jason, answer that. Okay. Kill him. Oh. Come on. Wrap it up, guys. We need to, oh, someone wait. needs to lose. Someone needs to lose. You're kidding, aren't you? Yeah. No. Go, go. Come on, you have five seconds to remove each brick. Five, four, three, two, one. one. Oh, oh, I think it's going to go down, Jade. Oh, you're kidding me. Oh. Oh. Winner. Jade for the girls team. Today's winner is Jay from the girls team. Woo! The overall winners. Forgive me, guys. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for today. We hope you have enjoyed the last three days as much as we have producing this seri series of programmes. We would like to thank everyone at the media department and the School of Performing Arts, Music and the Media for their help and support on this project.
Our special, our special thanks to Adrian Morian and Christine Tamian for the technical support. Laurie Shawlett, who is without a doubt, none of his, none of this program would be gone to you online if it weren't for him. Also, thank our lecturers Paul Lover and Emma, Emma Holmes. This project has been a collaboration amongst all 21 members of our year group. Without each and every one's input, this project would not have been possible. So many thanks to the crew on the floor. Camera three, Jordan Rowbottom. <laughs> camera two, Michael Crisp. <laughs> and camera one, Alexander Slingsby. <laughs> Staying with the crew on the studio floor, many thanks to our runners, Emily Normington, Luca Harvey, Jonathan Orrick, Lee Pound, and our floor manager, of course, Danny Williamson. <laughs> And also, our sound assistant, Ryan Leonard. Yay! Moving on to the crew upstairs at the studio control room. Many thanks to our lighting design, James Armstrong. Yay! And his assistant, Adam Farrer. Um, our VT operator, Katrina Solomenska. Yay! Our script writer, Kirsty Gibson. Yay! Auto Q operator, Lauren Burslam. Vision mixer, Philip Ellaby. Our fabulous sound manager, Julie Daisley. <laughs> and of course, we cannot forget our director, Chantal Burnett. <laughs> and finally, our production manager, Callum Robinson. We would also like to add an extra special thank you to our executive producers, Alexius Gata Zoyas and Ross Collier, <laughs> for organising for organizing the show. Without them, it would not happen. Our, it would not have happened. Also, I would like to thank them all for the help and support they have given us throughout the past two years on the course. And we want you to know we were much, you would be much missed from all of us. Yes, Alexius, really. <laughs> really, guys. <laughs> and to this Rossatron, I will see you on the lanes at Bowling Boy. <laughs> uh, I would like to also thank my co presenter. Jade Mortimer. Woo! And I'd like to thank Jason too. Woo! <laughs> We'd also want to thank all the other presenters from sports, weather, and to our VT presenters. And our ground operator, Kieran McNaughton. <laughs> well, thank you all for watching the show and sending in your pictures and hangover cures. I've been Jade Mortimer. And I've been Jason Webster. Remember, Remember kids, stay, stay in, in school. school. <laughs>